Okay, so welcome back. Now we are on to part four of Japanese for Dummies. No, it's just the title. Uh, <laughs> um, we are all beginners here, all learning. Hmm. Hmm. Look like I'm going skiing. Hmm. Hope everyone's having a grand day. Um, Everything has been very relaxing today. Nothing like a Friday or Friday the 13th. I thought I'd get a video out for Friday the 13th. Why not? Um, and yeah, we're going to do another episode of learning. Another episode of studying Japanese. Why not? We've got our ramen name. Of course, you have to have it. I think I've had this in every episode pretty much. And a little news feature. Okay, never mind. It's not working. Oh, there's... Ooh, actually this is cool though. I'm gonna leave it on red. Why not? Hmm. I look fantastic in these glasses. Hmm. Anyway, everyone's having a wonderful day, wonderful evening. Welcome to joining me for another lesson, another session of Japanese. Um, we're gonna hit back to where we left off. We just covered greetings. Uh, we're on to chapter four. We are absolutely hammering through this. Uh, yeah, so I mean, I hope everyone's having a, just a pleasant day. If you're not, pop it in the comments. Let everybody else help you out. Hopefully, these uh, these videos start to pick up. You know. Okay. Don't know what happened though. Anyway, uh, we've got plenty of pan pa. I'm gonna crack on. Uh, cool. So, uh, Aisatsu, greetings are the most important communication tools. Start your day with a friendly and cheerful greeting to your family. Friends, colleagues, teachers, bosses, and even strangers on the street. In the following sections, you find out how to greet all kinds of people all throughout the day. And because you inevitably, inevitably have to say goodbye to the people you encounter during your day, you also discover how to do just that. Addressing your friends and strangers. In English, you address others by their first names, by their nicknames and by their positions, or by their family names and the appropriate title, depending on your relationship and how close you are to that person. You don't want to sound too formal or distant, but you don't want to sound too friendly or presumptuous either. This is kind of going back to the last chapter when we were saying, don't call your boss mate. Okay, so minor inconvenience did the wrong part. So we're actually we're on to getting your numbers, times and measurements straight. So. Mastering Japanese numbers 1 to 100,000. Now, this is exciting because <laughs> I can only ever remember Ichi Nisan, Yongo, Roku, Nana, Hachi, Kyu, Ju, which is 1 to 10. Um, <laughs> but we're going to learn more because I always get really confused with when it goes to 20 to 30 and then all the bits and pieces in between. So, uh, here we go. You probably count and measure a variety of items every day. So, quantities and amounts are essential for doing almost everything in your life. Apples, coffee, people, time, distance, temperature, you name it, and it likely requires counting or measuring. In this chapter, you find out all about Japanese numbers. You also discover how to express times and dates in Japanese so you can describe. For example, when you're going to meet with your business partners or when you date or when your date should pick you up. <coughs> Excuse me. Ichi ni san. Counting in Japanese. In this section, I show you numbers from 1 to 100,000 in Japanese. <coughs> Excuse me. I don't know what is going on there. Bit of a tickle in my throat. Oh. The ramen is the cure. Okay. Think of it. You can increase your vocabulary by 100,000 words. Damn. You can master the art of counting from 1 to 10 right now. It'll be handy as you earn your belts in at a karate dojo. Um, at a karate dojo, they never start from rel, zero. They always start from ichi, when they punch and kick. Ichi ni san, uh, and that's true. Um, even in uh, other martial arts that I've done, uh, they always get you doing the counting. Although mine was like Korean and then like with the kickbox and they just, you just count one or two in your head because it's more American style. Although Muay Thai, they do get you counting in Thai. Which is interesting because I can never remember it. Okay, getting a black belt in counting. <laughs> okay, Japanese usually use the pronunciations shi, shi chi, and ka, or ku. 
for 4, 7 and 9 respectively, only for reciting numbers or doing arithmetic and not for actually counting things. Students of martial art may be familiar with these numbers from counting while practical kicks, punches and so on. In martial art language, syllables are often cut short, making counting practice sound like itchy ni san shi go rock shichi hachu or hach ku ju. It also makes war movies hard to understand. <laughs> Good to know. Uh, Japanese write numbers by using Arabic numerals, but they also write them in kanji. Here's how, here's how Japanese write and say the numbers from 1 to 10. Ichi ni san yon go roku nana hachi kyu ju. Smashed it. Numbers from 11 to 99. To make any number from 11 to 99, you just combine the numbers from 1 to 10. For example, 11 is ju ichi. Ju plus 1 ichi. How about 12? Same thing. 12 is ju ni. 20 is two sets of 10. So you say two tens. Ni ju. Oh. We're cracking the code. We're cracking the code. The code is being cracked. Do you see the logic? I do. You can use these, this pattern to count up to Q, 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 or 99. Uh, 9 tens plus 9. It's, it's, I hope this is sounding, making sense to you. If you're asleep, then hopefully this is still making sense to you. But this is, this is, this is getting there. Numbers from 100 to 9,999. To count over 100, keep using the patterns for numbers up to 99, which are described in the preceding section. 100 is hyaku, so 200 is ni hyaku. 1,000 is sen, therefore 2,000 is ni sen. Uh, like Nissan, <laughs> ni sen. I'm sure you can't wait to say 9,999. Yes, it's. Q sen Q Hyaku Q Ju Q. <laughs> Whoa, <laughs> that's a lot different to, than the English where we say 9,999. This counting business sounds easy, but be aware of some irregular sound changes. When the words for 100 Hyaku and 1000 Sen are preceding by the number 3 Sun, they become Byaku uh, and Zen, respectively. So 300 is San Byaku. Uh, and 3000 is San Zen. Other irregular sound changes are found in 600, Rop Pyaku, uh, 800, Ha Pyaku, and 8000, Has Sen. See the following list Hyaku is 100, Ni Hyaku, 200, San Byaku, 300, Yon Hyaku, 400, uh, Go Hyaku, 500, 600 is Rop Pyaku. 700 is Nana Hyaku, 800 is Ha Pyaku, 900 is Q Ha Hyaku, 1000 is Sen, 2000 is Ni Sen, 3000 is San Zen, 4000 is Yon Sen, 5000 is Go Sen, 6000 is Roku Sen, 7000 is Nana Sen, 8000 is Ha Sen, 9000 is Q Sen. Hope this is all sounding somewhat bringing it into your mind kind of thing you know numbers from 10,000 to 99,999 <laughs> unlike English Japanese is a special digit for 10,000 man so 50,000 isn't goju sen which is goju which is 50 or of sen which is 1,000 but go man which is 50,000 as you can see from the following list there's no annoying sound change when you combine numbers like and man ichiman niman Sanman, Yonman, Goman, Rokuman, Nanaman, Hachiman, and Kyuman. So that is 10,000 to 90,000. That is a lot of thousands. Now, can you say 99,999? It's Kyuman, Kyusen, Kyu Hyaku, Kyu Ju Whoa, that is quite a mouthful. Comparing English and Japanese digit names. You may find it helpful to see a side-by-side -side comparison of the English and Japanese names. Um, for different digits, if that's the case, you're in the right place. It's literally just uh, what we've just covered, which is absolutely fantastic. Japanese don't have a digit name for a million. One million in Japanese is 100 man, or more correctly, hyakuman. However, Japanese does have a highly rich 
special digit name for 100 million, which is one oku, or more correctly, ichi oku. Now, can you say 999,999,999? Get ready for this, because this, this is it's a mouthful. Q oku, Q sen, Q hyaku, Q ju, Q man, Q sen, Q hyaku, Q ju, Q. Whoa. Expressing amount of or quantity with counters. Words like piece, sheet, and pair, as in piece of cake, a sheet of paper, and a pair of shoes, express the amount of or quantity unit. Depending on the shape, size, and type of the item, you use different counters, short suffixes following numerals, um, and some frequently use counters along with their uses. So, dai, mechanical items, uh, is a car, computer, or refrigerator. So you'd use it in that sort of situation. Hiki, you'd use it for animals in small or medium size. So like mosquitoes, the mosquitoes is an animal. I don't, mm, that I think is up to debate. Um, mosquitoes, dogs, cats, frogs, and fish. Hmm. Hon, cylindrical items, pens, pencils, bananas, bananas, sticks, and umbrellas. Mai, flat items, bed sheets, paper, stamps. So like mai would be, you know, your bed. Um, sheets and stuff like that. Uh, then you've got nin, which is people, students, children, women, just people in general. Su, various inanimate items, furniture, apples, bags, traffic, and light. So now we have a table. Let's have a little gander. Of course, to use counters, you have to pair them with numbers. Uh, uh, okay, so ichidai, ichidai. Is one counting with counters ichidai? Okay, this is a big table. Ip piki, ip pon, ichi mai, hitori, hitotsu, ni dai, ni hiki, ni hon, ni mai, futari, futatsu, san dai, san piki, san pon, san mai, san nin, mitsu. Yon dai, yon hiki, yon hon, yon mai, yon nin, yotsu, yo dai, yo hi, uh, go hiki, go hon, go mai, go nin, itsu, tsu. Roku dai, pop piki, rock pon, roku mai, roku nin, mutsu. Nana dai, nana hiki, nana hon, nana mai, nana hi, nin, nana tsu. Hachi dai, hap piki, hap pon, hachi mai, hachi nin, yatsu, q dai, q hiki, q hon, q mai, q nin, kokonotsu, ju dai, ju piki, ju pon, ju mai, ju nin, to. Whew. Whew. It's very, very hot here in England. Um, <laughs> it's like. 20 something odd degrees but I've also got my laptop over there I've got the lights, I've got the computer on it's just very toasty in here mm. almost like a sweat box mm. lovely but I can't help but think that wearing things like my leather jacket and whatever like this you just roast but uh, yeah I mean what kind of weather do you have right now you know Pop it in the comments. I'll have a little read. I have found myself reading the comments more and more recently. It's good fun. Um, so yeah, tell me what the weather's like where you are. Mm. Here is absolutely roasting right now. But other places in the in the world, like I've been, it's been hotter and you definitely feel it. But I mean, it is like eleven at night right now, and it's still quite toasty. Um, yeah, and for for a Brit, yeah. It's, but it's just like close to the ear and it's just uncomfortable. So, notice how the counter tsu is a little bit different from the other counters in the table. First off, it's written kana rather than kanji. What does that tell you? That tsu is a na native Japanese counter, whereas the other counters in the table are originally from Chinese. As a result, the numbers used with tsu aren't ichi, ni, san, and yo, and so on, which are originally from Chinese. But hito, futa, mi, and so on, which are native Japanese vocabulary. 
The counter for people, uh, which is uh, follows the patterns as a native Japanese counter only for the first two numbers and as a Chinese counter for three and after, as you can see in table 15, which is the table we just covered. The counter um, is pronounced as ri and used with native Japanese numbers for the first two, but it's pronounced as nin and used with numbers of Chinese origin for three and after. At any rate, when you write and you, you can use the number in Arabic numeral or in kanji followed by the counter written in kanji except for tsu, um, which is written in hiragana. For example, um, it gives you some examples there. But it's a 1080p camera, so you have to deal with HD. All of this in HD. Hmm. Oh dear, it's been a long day. It's been a long day. Using some counters caused sound changes in the numbers and in the counter itself and the Japanese native word for the number 10, to. Can't be followed by the counter tsu. Don't be too concerned about these irregular changes. Even if you make a mistake here, you'll be understood perfectly by Japanese. Um, I think that general common sense, they get a general understanding. Like, but like with most people, when you have a conversation, you can kind of tell what you're trying to say most of the time. As long as, of course, like if you're asking for directions and you, you start asking for like um, how much something is, you know, then it's obviously going to be a little bit more confusing. But, <laughs> you know, um, yeah, like general common sense. Uh, native speaker, uh, ja native Japanese numbers are available only from one to ten. If you have eleven or more apples, use the count apples. Use the counter ko, for example, to say nine when counting apples. You can either say kokonotsu or kyoko. However, to say eleven apples, you need to say juniko. If you forget which counter to use and you're counting no more than ten of something, the number of phrases. Um, work for counting pretty much anything except for people and animals. Indicating ordinal numbers with meh. <laughs> meh. Ordinal number phrases such as the first and second are essential for pinpointing things and people in a sequence. To form an audible num uh, ordinal number um, phrase in Japanese, you take one of the Japanese counters and add meh after it. For example, san nin meh means third person and Mitsume means third thing. Following are some additional examples of ordinal number phrases. San nin me no musuku, musuko, my third son. San nin me no musuku, musuko. Uh, Migi kawa no itsu tsu mi no, no, mi no ie. The fifth house on the right hand side. Who's going to say this? The fifth house on the right hand side. Don't even tell me that you're going to say this to me and say, actually, when, like, actually, someone's told me this before, because this is crazy. Migigawa no itsutsu me no ie. Boom. <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> I'll take that and I will move on. Nihai me no kohi. Second cup of coffee. Nihai me no kohi. Yotsu Mino Shingo The fourth traffic light. I mean you'd say set of traffic lights, but you wouldn't say just fourth traffic lights, but I mean that's what it's like here anyway. Yotsu me no shingo. Niban me no musoko. My second son. If you want to say the number X, just add ban after the number. For example, Ichiban. So to tell someone that Mike is number one in the class, he'd say Maiku wa kurasu de ichiban desu. So, yeah, Mike is the second or the number one in class. <laughs> Maiku wa kurasu de ichiban desu. Telling time. If someone asks you nanji, what time? Can you respond quickly by looking at your toke, which is your watch? You can. After reviewing the next sections, which tell you how to refer both generally and in terms of hours and minutes. Noting hours and minutes. You can express time in Japanese by using the counters ji and fun, as shown in tables 5 and 3. Um, when talking about minutes, 
poon sometimes changes to poon, so watch out. So, e g g is one. Niji, Sanji, Yoji, Goji, Rokuji, Shiji, 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 um, Hachiji, Kuji, Juji, Juichiji, Juniji. Oof, that's going to take a little bit of practice, but that's one to twelve in time. So. That was st stating the hour, so that's the hour. Uh, now we're going to do minutes, which is so one minute is eat poon, uh, two minutes is ni foon, san poon, yon poon, go foon, rock poon, uh, na na foon, <laughs> ah, okay, yeah, hap poon, kyo foon, uh, ju poon, ju i poon, ju ni foon. You can use the convenient phrase han which is half for half an hour or 30 minutes. Mai or me before and sugi after are also convenient for telling time. Sorry, but there's no simple phrase for a quarter of an hour or 15 minutes in Japanese. So if you want to say quarter past two, you need to say um, ji fun sugi, which is 2.15. To, spe to specify gozen, which is a.m. or gogo, which is p.m., put the appropriate word in front of the number, as in gogo ji um, yeah, which is 8 p.m. Check how people say what time it is now. Ima nanji desu ka? Uh, what time is it now? Ima ji fun desu. Uh, Ima ji fun sugu sugi desu. Uh, it's five minutes past three now. Ima ji fun mai desu. Mai desu. Hmm. Ma desu. There we go. Ima nihon wa gozen ji desu. It's 2 a.m. in Japan. Well, it's 10.55 here. Japanese train schedules usually follow the 24-hour system. For example, ju ji, ji chi means only 1 a.m. And 13, ju sanji means only 1 p.m. This system eliminates a.m. and p.m. Ambig ambiguity. And you don't need to say gozen or gogo. Knowing when to say fun and poon. Fun changes to poon depending on the preceding sound. When the numbers are ichi, roku, hachi, um, and ju, replace the last hiragana, with, which is basically an amount, a moment of silence, and add poon. That is, you get ipun, ropun, hapun, and jupun. In addition, after n, you just add poon. So you'll get san poon. Yon poon, and for others, just add fun. Talking about time. To express at what time, from what time, and until what time, and by what time, you need the particles ni, kara, made, and madani. Make sure to place the particle after and not before the time phrase. Chapter 3 gives you a lowdown on using particles, and here are some examples. We already covered chapter 3. It's couple of videos back now I think so you have to kind of go back and check that out okay so konsato konsato wa naji nanji ni hajimaremasu ka sanji ni hajimaremasu what time does the concert start? It starts at three. Konsato wa nanji ni hajimarimasu ka? Sanji ni hajimarimasu? Ranchi su sabasi saba sabisu wa gozen? Jihan kara go go jimare desu? Oof, these ones are getting a bit trickier. Ji fun mar mai ma made na kite kudasai. Please come by five minutes before three. Oof. Instead of giving the exact time, you can vaguely specify the part of the day or use relative time expressions. Ah, sir. That's the morning. Hiru, noon. Ban, evening. 
Well, they say Kanban. Okay, that makes sense. Yonaku, Yonaka, the middle of the night. Ima, now. Saki, a little while ago. To tell the length of time, just add kan or ji or fu. However, kan is usually omitted for fun in conversations. Check out these examples. Ji kan ben kyo shimashita. I studied for two hours. Ji kan. Ni. Ni ji kan ben kyo shimashita. I studied for two hours. Hachi ji kan kakarimasu. It took eight hours. Jugu fon a kakarimasu. It takes 15 minutes. Okay. It's a date. Delving into the calendar. Making plans with others in Japanese requires having a basic grasp of the terms used for days of the week, months, years, and so on. With the information in the following sections, you'll be prepared to mark your calendar, which is your calendar, for all sorts of fun activities. Talking about the days of the week. Both American and Japanese weeks only have seven days. An American week, at least on the cal uh, calendar, starts on Nichiyobi, um, which is a Sunday, and ends on Doyobi, which is Saturday. But a Japanese week starts at Getsuyobi, which is Monday, and ends on Nichiyobi, which is Sunday. Japanese work first and the rest later. Here are all the terms you need to know to talk about days of the week. Getsuyobi, which is Monday. Kayobi, which is Tuesday. Suiyobi. I think I've got that. Wednesday, Moku Yobi, which is Thursday, Kin Yobi, which is Friday, Do Yobi, which is Saturday, Nichi Yobi, which is Sunday. So if someone were to ask you, Kyo wa Nana Yobi desu ka? What day is it today? Uh, you may respond with, Kyo wa Do Yobi desu. Today is Saturday. Following are some additional statements featuring days of the week so you can see them in action. Getsu yobi kara kin yobi made atarakimasu. I work from Monday to Friday. That would be the dream. Konsato wa diobi desu. The concert is on Saturday. Nichi yobi wa yakuri shimasu. I relax on Sundays. Nichi yobi wa yakuri shimasu. I relax on Sundays. Naming the months and counting them up. The Japanese word for moon is suki which also means month. Japanese don't have a separate name for each month, yet it uses a number paired with the counter gatsu. So January is Ichigatsu, um, and December is Junigatsu. Here's how to write and say all 12 in Japanese. Ichigatsu, Nigatsu, Sangatsu, Shigatsu, Gogatsu, Rokugatsu, Shichigatsu, Hachigatsu, Kujetgatsu, Jugatsu, Juichigatsu, Junigatsu. To express the number of months, like one month and two months, use the counter kagetsu uh, or kagetsu kan. Ik, ik kagetsu, which is one month, ni kagetsu, uh, san kagetsu, yon kagetsu, go kagetsu, rock kagetsu, nana kagetsu, hachi kagetsu, ryu kagetsu, uh, jo kagetsu, ju ik kagetsu, ju ni kagetsu. It kind of does seem very simple the more that you go on the more that you count them it's literally like counting one to ten you kind of just have to practice counting one to ten really which is Jini san yongo roku nana hachiku ju and then trying to remember the ones that come after that which is ju ichi ju ni ju san ju yang and so on oh the more you talk well it just it just drills into your head oh. in conversation kagetsu is more common than kagetsu kan so you can use kagetsu, but it's good to know both of them because you may hear either one. Counting the days. In the next section, I show you how to say the first, the second, and so on. For dates, to find out how you say these type dates, uh, types of words in relation to other items, such as buildings, coffee, and people, see the area indicating ordinal numbers with me section. So if you're not sure, go back, rewatch it, or just leave this on when you sleep, and hopefully you'll get addicted to my English accent and you'll also remember your Japanese. Okay, so Tsuitachi uh, is first, second is Fitsuka, third is Mika, fourth is Yokka, fifth is Itsuka, eighth, sixth is Muika, 
Seventh is Nanoka. Eighth is Yoka. Ninth is Kokonoka. Tenth is Toka. Eleventh is Ju Ichi Nichi. Twelfth is Ju Nichi Nichi Ni Nichi. Ju Nichi Nichi. Ju Ni Nichi. Thirteenth is Ju San Nichi. Fourteenth is Ju Yoka. Fifteenth is Ju Go Nichi. Sixteenth is Ju Roku Nichi. Seventeenth is Ju Shichi Nichi. Eighteenth is Ju Hachi Nichi. Nineteenth is Ju Ku Nichi. Twentieth is Hatsuka. Twenty first is Ni Jun Ichi Nichi. So the more they can they really start going like your twenty, your thirty and stuff like that. It looks like this gets quite challenging. The twenty second is Ni Ju Nichi Ni Nichi. Twenty third is Ni Ju San Nichi. Twenty fourth is Ni Ju Yoka. Twenty fifth is Ni Ju Go Nichi. Twenty sixth is Ni Ju Roku Nichi. Twenty seventh is Ni Ju Shichi Nichi. Twenty eighth is Ni Ju Hachi Nichi. Uh, the 29th is Niju Kunichi. 30th is Sanju Nichi. 31st is Sanju Ichi Nichi. So those are the 31 days of the month, I believe. So that's that. You can also use the dates shown for expressing the number of days in a given span. For example, Futsuka, meaning the either the second or two days, can make it crystal clear that you're talking about the number of days. Just add Kan to this form, Futsukan. Um, which is two days to eliminate any ambiguity. The only exception to these rules is Sutachi or Suichi Tachi. Um, suichi Tachi means only the first and not one day. To say one day, use Ichi Nichi. <laughs> I like that. It feels like it's very easy to remember when you start saying stuff like this because it just seems simple. But it also sounds good when you say it. It sounds like fun. When you're talking this language, it just sounds like fun. And. Detective Bamboo. Likes fun. Detective Bamboo. Likes fun. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Does anybody else have stuffed animals? Uh, this one's very important to me. Detective Bamboo is a wonderful panda. Most of the time, when they're not wearing sandals or slippers. Sandal slippers on my bed. Okay. Counting the weeks. You can specify the weeks in a month or the weeks in any cycle by saying Dai. The number and then shu, for example, dai ishu, the first week, dai nishu, the second week, dan san shu, the third week, and dan yon shu, the fourth week. To count weeks, use the counter shu kan, as in is shu kan, or is shu kan, uh, one week, ni shu kan, two weeks, and so on. Reeling off the years. To specify the toshi, the year, just add the counter nen after the number that expresses the year. 1998 then. Senkyo Kyako Kyu Ju Haichi Nen. Whoa. And then 2012 then. Ni Senju Ne Ni Nen. Well, that was a lot easier. Um, follow this advice and you'll, be and you'll be understood perfectly in Japan. But be ready to hear a year referred to with a unique Nengo error name. As in Heisei Ni Ju Yen. Niju Yonen, which is equivalent to 2012. Check out the nearby error names in Japan sidebar for informative uh, information on this system. If you want to count years, use either Nen Kan or Nen as counters. So one year is Ichi Nen uh, or Ichi Nen Kan, and two years is Ni Nen or Ni Nen Kan. Note in conversation, the shorter version Nen is used more frequently than Nen Kan, but again, be aware of both forms. Is a good idea. Sound. So, specifying dates and times. When specifying a full date, the Japanese ways um, start from the largest unit of time, the toshi, and then move to successfully smaller units, the tsuki, the hi, and the yobi, in that order. For example, Thursday, October 25th, 2012, is ni senju ni nen jugatsu ni jugo nichi moku yobi. Um, and he say, he say, he he say, he say, he say, he say. Okay, he say. Need you go? Then you got to need you go. Nichi moko yobi. Error names. Oof. You can express years in two ways in Japan. You can use the Western system with the counter nen, 
as in 2012, 2012 Nen, Nisonju Ni Nen. Um, or you can use the Japanese system with Nengo and the counter Nen as in Heisei Ni Jo Yo Nen. A new Nengo is created every time a new emperor ascends the throne in Japan and continues to be used until a different emperor takes his place. The first year of any era is called Gannen. For example, the year Emperor Heisei ascended the throne, Heisei Gannen, um, in the Japanese system, and the following year, that's what it was called, uh, and the following year was Heisei Ninen. Government officials tend to use only the Japanese system, but many companies and institutions use the Western systems. My daughter was born in the Heisei era, my mother and I were born in Showa era, and my grandmother was born in Meiji. Um, there was a short era, Taisho era, between Meiji era, Meiji era and Showa era. Let me list these eras of modern Japan chronologically. Meiji, Taisho, Showa, Heisei. Heisei is the present. Although, that's the present from when I got this book. I don't know what it is now. Instead of using a specific date on a calendar, you can also use relative time expressions based on the concepts of before and after, or previous and following. So, Kino, which is yesterday, Kino, Kyo, today, Ashita, tomorrow, Senshu, last week, Konshu, this week, Raishu, next week, Sengetsu, last month, Kongetsu, this month, Raigetsu, Raigetsu, next month. Kyonen, last year. Kotoshi, this year. Rainen, rai Rainen, next year. You can expect to hear alternative forms such as these when you're in slightly formal context. Honjitsu, today. Aso, aso, tomorrow. Sakuijitsu, uh, yesterday. Sakunen, last year. The following additional terms for referring to the future are always useful. Asate, the day after tomorrow. Saraishu, Saraishu, the week after next. Sarai Getsu, the next, the month after next. Sarai Nen, the year after next. To specify when something happens or happened, insert a time phrase into the sentence. You can place a time phrase anywhere in a sentence as long as it's before the verb. If you're dealing with a specific time, place the particle ni. I mean, the ram ramane is just very carbonated after the time phrase if you're dealing with a relative time you don't need to use the particle ni i illustrated differences in the following list of examples um so juni gatsu hachi ni tokyo ni ikimasu i go to tokyo on the december the 28th ashita kaimono o ishimasu i go shopping tomorrow uh, Senkyo hya hyoko kyoju hachi ni uh, ore, ore mashita. I was born in 1998. I would dread to try to say 1994 <laughs> in Japanese. Senshu yachin o hari mashita. I put the rent. I paid the rent last week. To list a number of activities in the same sentence, put all the verbs except the last one into te form. Um, you don't need to use any particle that would correspond to and in English converting all the verbs except the last one into the te form handles the and concept the last verb expresses the tense of all the activities my goodness ashita wa kaimono oshite eiga o mimasu I'll go shopping and watch a movie tomorrow in the nearby talk and talk dialogue, Eleanor talks about her vacation, plans for Hawaii. Notice that her first sentence ends with indesu. Uh, in Japanese, you often form a statement by using indesu in conversation, especially when you provide some information or explanations. The effect of indesu is to encourage your partner to respond to your statements. You'll sound much more inviting and friendly if you use this ending. It shows your willingness to listen to the partner's comments and opinions. Therefore, the n desu in conversations, but not in written form or public speech, where you don't expect the audience to respond to you and uh, after each statement. When a verb is followed by n desu, it must be in the informal plain form. Okay, so Eleanor in the dialogue talks about when she'll leave and when she'll return from her trip. The Japanese verb 
to go and to return are iku and keiru, both in the both of them in the u verbs. Practice conjugating them: iku, ikenai, ikenai, iki, ite. Uh, keiru, kaire, nai, nai, kairi, and kaite. Uh, so this is the Eleanor Kevin conversation. Eleanor. Rai get to Hawaii ni iki ndisi. I'm going to Hawaii next month. Kevin, honto ni nan ni chikan. Really for how many days? Eleanor, mi ke kan. Mi mi ke kan. Three days. Uh, Kevin, mi ji kai desu ne. That's short, isn't it? Eleanor, yeah. Uh, jugu ni ni chi ni ite. Ju hachi ni chi ni kaire desu. Oh my goodness. I got on the 15th and I'll be back on the 18th. Hopefully, that is what I said. No judging me. Just learning. Uh, so, honto is to. Iku to go. Kairu to return. Miji kai short. Familiarizing yourself with the metric system. Japanese use the metric system for taking and discussing measurements. So if you go to Japan, expect to hear about liters, grams, meters, and uh, li li liters. I believe they mean liters uh, and kilometers, uh, rather than gallons, pounds, feet, and miles. Here are the terms you need to know to speak about measurements in J Japanese: miri, millimeters; senchi, centimeter; miteru, meter; kiro. Kilometer, gramu, gram, kiru, kilogram, ton, uh, which is a ton, ritoru, um, lit uh, liter, heiho, heiho, square meter, ripo meteru, cubic meter. So we are pretty much at the end of this. So I suppose this video will be shorter because we are. We are done. We're done with chapter five. Chapter five. So numbers is done. We are hammering through this book. I hope you're all really enjoying the videos. Uh, I'm certainly enjoying making them. Um, I'm certainly learning um, fairly smoothly. I think just getting the dialogue down is the tricky part. Um, but I try to make these videos every couple of days, so you don't really have to wait. And if you really enjoy sleeping, watching my videos, if you enjoy my voice. Um, seeing me checking out the red lights red lights um yeah <laughs> uh, yeah it's just a bit of fun you know learning study session so yeah i hope everyone really enjoys the videos you get to check out well you can't really see that my eyes are blue but my eyes are blue um yeah i mean i have a lot of fun making them i'm learning i think that saying them is very helpful um saying the words saying the numbers is super useful super helpful just to help everybody gauge and understand and hopefully my voice isn't boring i know that um it's english and i don't know i i happen to think that it's pretty 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 sexy yeah so yeah um, if there's any questions, by all means, pop them down in the comments. I, I, I do read them. I do read my comments section. It's not mad. I mean, my channel isn't massive, but hopefully one day if people like to come and enjoy my, my study sessions and learn with me as I'm learning and I'm reading the voice, uh, reading the, the, the words from the book, you know. I'm going to be doing more different things in the future, but Japanese is one thing that I've wanted to do for a long time, and now I'm doing it. There's no excuses not to do it, you know. So just enjoying it, checking out the pandas. You've got. Detective Bamboo, you've got pretty beefy working out panda. Look at that beast! Oof. <laughs> there you go. Mm. <laughs> anyway, uh, thank you for watching. Leave a like, comment, uh, hit the bell icon to let me know, let you know when I release another video. There'll be every few days. I do release them fairly often. I say, and short of unless I'm getting like tattoos done, like this one, and you can't quite see it. Jeremiah twenty nine eleven in old English Latin Beasley or oh, I'm getting things like my mobile license my driver's license things like that which was pucker um, I'll be uploading quite often so uh, if you have any other recommendations or videos 
video ideas, books to read. If you want me to read a specific book, let me know and yeah, we'll do it. <laughs> Thank you for watching. Have a great day. Sweet dreams if you're sleeping. Um, yeah, take care.